Rick, how you doing? I'm doing great, Keith. How you doing, bro? Good. Fantastic to see you, man. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, so uh, why don't you announce today's show? Well, today we're going to talk about something that's really important for everybody because it cuts across every person's life and it's extremely, extremely important to get this tool down. And that is doing the hard stuff and making it a habit. Well, uh, I've struggled with that <laughs> uh, quite a few times. You know, uh, the old procrastination bug kicks in and I just don't want to do it, but I found that I produce the greatest results uh, when I take on the hard stuff. You know, I, I think there's somebody that said, it might be Tony Robbins, I think uh, Robbins has uh, one of his many uh, great shows. One of his shows is about how you solve problems or do habits that are sort of um, foreign to you, that you don't like, and his thing is, the only way you can get to it is to get through it. You just got to push your way through the, head, through, through the, the obstacle make it a habit dealing with it. I totally agree. No matter how unpleasant it might be or how much you uh, dread doing it, there are some things that for you to have the quality of life that you want uh, to produce the results you want to have, you have to push through those difficult tasks uh, to have that certain outcome. Well, let's talk about fitness in your example for, for a minute. You're, you're a really, really fit and you work at it and you continue to work on it. You've never lapsed as far as I know. But was there a time in your life when you weren't fit? Uh, the time in, I, in my life when I wasn't fit, it was over 25 years ago. Wow. I've been fit for a long time. Uh, but when I wasn't fit, I've always been active my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, the level of fitness now is much different. Nutrition, things like that have kicked in. You know, I put a high premium on quality sleep uh, and not, you know, um, taking, surrounding myself with negative energy. So I'm pretty healthy in all aspects. And, and I'm grateful for that. I don't oh, take yeah. it lightly. I'm extremely grateful for that. Well, I was going to ask you, when you, when you made that transition for some, from some place that you didn't want to be mm -hmm. to going to a new place that you really wanted to be, how did you get leverage on yourself to change? What, what kinds of things were you disgusted with about yourself or you didn't like? And did that help you develop a habit? Yes. I'll give you a couple examples that have a little bit of the physical in it, you know, because uh, you know, I have been known to be vain in the past. Other people may have not have seen it. Uh, maybe they did, but I certainly knew it. So I'll give you an example of me doing that. So uh, when I was a kid, I smiled a lot. I didn't talk a whole lot because I stuttered quite a bit. Mm. And my stuttering was, you know, met with a lot of laughter, you know, uh, from kids in the neighborhood. My stepfather wasn't very compassionate about my stuttering, but that's okay, you know, we made it through it. But uh, be, as a result of stuttering, I really smiled a lot. I wanted to be the likable kid. So when I was much younger, around 14, someone made a comment about my lips and how thick they are. And so what I started to do was from age 14 to age 37, anytime you saw me, I would look like this. My lips would be folded in so you couldn't see my lips oh, at all. Wow. And because I thought I'd had, you know, thick lips, and which I do. And, but I made up a story that went with it that I'm ugly, I'm unattractive, people won't like me, women certainly won't uh, want to go out with me. And so for 14 to 37, if you see any picture of me, I am not smiling. Jeez, yet. that's really true. I'm not smiling. Hey, my lips are just folded in. And not only that, what it also did to me was whenever I would get ready to go somewhere, I would sit in the mirror or stand in front of the mirror and I would picture my mouth and try to position my mouth as much as possible in a certain kind of pose so that uh, whenever I talked that my lips would be you know, minimal, as minimal as possible. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I'm in the mirror, I'm like, Hi, this is Keith. And I'm trying to talk Jeez. and introduce myself and say that wow. without that, because I got this story running in the background. And when people are talking to me, I'm listening to them, but I'm not really present. I'm actually checked out trying to hide 
the thickness of my lips. And so this went on for a long, long time. And then a few people would ask me over the years, why don't you smile, why don't you smile? It's like, smile is not my thing, smile is not my thing. That became like my go-to. I told myself that so many times that I actually believed that I didn't enjoy smiling. And, um, and so I was trying to hide this other side of me that I didn't like. And so taking on the whole, you know, back to your, the topic of the show, you know, making the hard stuff and habit, what I started to do was I started to embrace that side of me. And I said, you know what, no matter what, I'm uh, going to smile. Wow. I'm going to embrace this part of who I am. I'm going to love it. And now I have no consideration whatsoever. But it was really, really hard in the beginning when I would go out and introduce myself to people and talk to them and, and just try to be present to. But every time I did it, what I said was, this is very hard. It may take a while, but little by little, I'm going to keep this commitment and smile every time. I'm not going to be totally obsessed uh, and distracted by trying to keep my mouth in. And, I, and every time I do that, it's going to be symbolic in a step forward mm. in loving all of me, every, every bit of me. Did and so you, that's what I did. Did you go back at all when you came through that idea of just being yourself and letting it hang out there and do whatever... Um, you wanted to do to show your personality, smile, be cheerful. W when you were st started down that path, did, did, did you ever feel like it wasn't worth it and that the habit was too risky or too hard or the price tag was, was too much? No, I never felt like that was the case because it wasn't about, it moved away from, it moved beyond me trying to attract someone of the opposite sex. What it became was, you gotta love yourself. Love yourself is putting yourself all out there. As you say, warts and all. And so that became the, the, the path, the, the process. Everything I was doing is about that. However, what I would do was, whenever someone would show me a picture, I would zero in on my lips. And I was like, man, I want that picture back. And I was like, no, let it ride, let it ride. This is part of loving that side of you. And this is part of the process, it's part of the process. So now, whenever someone takes a picture, uh, I'll let other people say I don't like you for this reason, or my hair wasn't this, or my eyes were closed. But I made a commitment to myself that if everyone else likes a picture, I am not going to speak up and say I don't like it for that reason. And again, that become that's more me being courageous with loving myself. So that's kind of a physical, you know, attribute uh, and making, you know, uh, taking a hard thing and making it a habit. I think one of the things that's very hard for people, certainly was for me when I started to be re, and also in other areas of my life, including my, um, my career, uh, developing habits that were really, really productive. And I stumbled around, I didn't know quite how to do it. And so what I did was I created a sort of a template based on what mm -hmm. a lot of people had told me about what things you need to do. And then started down that road, and some things worked, some things didn't. But I was so dissatisfied with where I was when I was starting that whether it was career or fitness or nutrition, I was so dissatisfied with myself that I had to have that leverage. I had to have that real motivation to, to change. Otherwise, it right. wouldn't have happened. Because you have to have that strength to say, okay, we're going to have some bad times with this. <laughs> we're not going to like doing the habit thing. You know? we, we don't want the habit right, at all. No doubt. But we want the results, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. It's, you got to right. put the time in. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. And this is the path. You know, there's no way around it. This is what I got to go through to get there. That's right. So when you do a habit, let me give you an example of something that would be an easy way out. What do you do when you're sick? What happens if you don't feel like uh, working out or you've got a whole bunch of people depending on you at a spin class or here at Lake Tahoe when we're uh, all getting ready to ski? What right. do you do when you don't, you don't you feel good? How do you tr get yourself up for it? Uh, so there have been times that I've been sick and I have rallied to get there. And I rarely cancel anything because of some kind of sickness. Um, I just really try to have a positive mindset, and when I feel it coming on, I try to do all the things that are going to, going to contribute to me being as healthy as possible, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but part of it is is just you know rallying. I tell myself, just show up and do the best you can. You know, as long as I don't make anyone else sick, just do the best you can, and it's your best is going to be more than enough. And so that's what I do in those situations. What about you? Yeah, I think that's the same thing. I, I early on, I think when I was about fourteen or fifteen, I re realized the importance of developing good habits for studying, for example, and that's where it started. Once I learned how to master studying habits, that spilled over into other things: my career, fitness, to be re, and other things. But I think that the trick was that you begin with the idea that you need to change and you keep focusing on the end of the, the, the outcome that you want for right. yourself. You know, so whatever, however that may occur for you, you may want to put up photographs of yourself 
uh, looking beautiful or uh, fit or sleek, or uh, take the, the, the body of somebody that you admire and put your head on it. Right, on the, on the refrigerator. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's one little thing. Uh, or practice getting up half an hour or, or an hour earlier. Um, I think a big key for me was starting the, the day really early. So I had a clear mind, me too. be up at 4.35 o'clock, start too. down the day. And it's easier, I think, to overcome that inertia, overcome that sedentary feeling, I just want to lay here. And once you get into that groove, you, it's sort of like, um, well, it's sort of like taking vitamins. You can't stop doing it. It just feels so healthy and right. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's um, spot on. You know, one of the things I think if I was to give you guys a, a tip or a hack about doing uh, something hard and making it a habit is first thing in the morning, like seriously. And so I've got a little ritual for the things that I may not feel like doing. Let's mm -hmm. say it's mm -hmm. a project I'm working on that I have no clue how to do it. And it just seems you know, insurmountable to learn this new skill or to complete this presentation and I don't have the motivation to do it. What I try to do is create a scenario when I'm going to be the most, if I'm going to do it, that I might be the most motivated. Ah. And for me, it's <laughs> early morning, after a good night of sleep, and I, some kind of movement, some kind of exercise. So let's say, you know, I don't have time to go to the gym and do an hour workout. Well, for me, it's going to be three minutes of ab work, some stretching and some rolling, uh, a couple of air squats, you know, maybe 10 or so air squats. You know, I've woken up the central nervous system. That's why I love squats. They wake up the central nervous system. I become more alert. I eat something that's gonna be healthy so that it doesn't bog me down and make me sleepy. Mm -hmm. And then I sit down in front of the computer and I just set a mini goal, like mini goal. You know what, for the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna be focused on this. I'm, I'm, and if I can get this little thing done, you know, just like find the reference or the phone number that I need to call for, for you know, for step two. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And then once I do that and I get to step two, uh, and let's say the research took me 15 minutes, then I say, you know what, just call and leave a voicemail message, you know, for the person to call you back with the information that might be helpful. And that just kind of dominoes into the next step. And before you know it, instead of sitting down for 20 minutes, I sat down for an hour. And then I got the momentum. And after that point, I just repeat. Boy, that's a great tip about taking off bite-sized pieces. No matter how big the project, even if you have 10,000 documents yet that you have to go through and look for certain facts or look for certain names, even with that much kind of busy work ahead of you, if you just do a bit of it, just break it down into little tiny bricks, it works. There's a Japanese concept called Kaizen. It's K-A-I-Z-E-N. And the concept with Kaizen is very interesting. It's like Keith said, you start with baby steps. You make the phone call, you leave a message, you look up the phone number. Baby steps, but the trick is, you got to do a baby step or two, and you can never go back. You can't go back. You've got to keep going forward every time. Absolutely. You move. One other hack for me that works is when I have a big project, um, and I've, I'm finding myself um, procrastinating, what I'll do is I'll clear off my desk so that there's absolutely nothing on it. No computer, no paper, no printer, nothing. The desk is completely clear, and then I take the project, the file that the project is in, put it right in the middle of that blank table, and I just stare at it. I love it. I just stare at it, because it's like, okay, jerk, what do you want? It's like I'm fighting this file, and I finally say, oh, the hell with it, I'll just start working on yeah, it. Yeah, let me just open it up. Yeah, let's just open it up, see what's in there. You know, usually yeah. it's like tax bills, you know, like, <laughs> it goes in a spiral down. <laughs> exactly. <and, laughs> but you gotta keep at it as the thing, and, and it, there's no other way other than just doing it. Right. And I think partly our, our problem in our country is that we have so many great things and so many easy ways of doing things. We're not used to doing hard things. We're used to having things done well, and when we do hard things, we think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. <laughs> the only way that you can prepare and succeed is to do the hard stuff. Absolutely. Only way you can meet your goals. You know, uh, I want to say one more thing, and then I want you to give us one big takeaway for the show that people can uh, take with them. Okay. And uh, the thing I want to say that I think we both have benefited from is when there's something that's hard to do and you have a, an, an accountability partner. So let's say that one of my things is I'm traveling to a city, I got a very busy agenda when I get there, and it, I would feel really, really good. Or if I got a gym workout in, or if I wouldn't feel <laughs> good about getting one in, I feel like for my goals, I should get one in. <laughs> so let's say that's the case. I text you or Tim and I say, hey, listen, I'm going to this city. 
uh, I'm going to get a workout when I'm there, and I'm going to text you when it's complete. I do not want to. I do not want to make that phone call to you guys to say it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So that's that's something that's going to be challenging. No matter what time I get into that town or what the day is like, I try to hit the gym the first full day that I'm there. The next day, and one of the things I've found have been has been really successful for me is telling someone else that this is what I'm setting out to do, and and reporting back that I've done it. Now you guys won't make me wrong if I don't get it done. You won't make me feel bad. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind making you feel bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so, so that's kind of the thing that uh, I want to do is, is I want to do exactly that. I want to let these guys know that I'm trying to play a big game. Uh, I'm letting myself know that I'm playing a super big game. And then I just take it from there. You know, one other thing. I just dropped my butt mic, so this is probably a lesson in uh, being motivated to do a better job of putting the mic on, which is hard for me. So this is fitting right with the show's idea. Um, one thing I'd like to say for a takeaway that I think is really important. How about an affirmation? Accountability is great for sharing with your friends. And by the way, he takes photographs of the gym and sends them to you to, to prove that he's there. Absolutely. <laughs> but one of the things that's a very important thing, I think, is to have an affirmation. One affirmation you might try for yourself is, I do hard things, period, and I'm good at it, period. Play around with that one, see if that might help. But read it, think about it, and really believe it. I love that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Great show, my friend. Hey, buddy, I love you. I love you, too. Thank you. Take care, man. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you.